That beautiful bird is called the Peruvian plant cutter. Um, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about that bird and an adventure I had. Um, I'm very glad this happened because um, I have such an interest in conservation and animals in general, as anybody who knows me knows this. And, uh, you know, it's so great when going to Africa, I'm just immersed in that with my friends Dale and Julia. Um, but I haven't had that opportunity here. And out of the blue, last week, I got an uh, email from uh, friends of Father Joe, and it is a Peruvian woman who's been married to an American for years. He was a Peace Corps volunteer in the 60s. Um, they're both in their 70s, and they, like me, are trapped in Peru. Uh, they came down to visit her family, and they've been here since, uh, I guess, since February. Anyway, they're, um, I, I'd never met them before. And they said, would you like to go visit the bird man? And I'm like, first of all, who are you? Second of all, who's the bird man? <laughs> it was a strange message, huh? But um, I, so I contacted them further and they told me that they are going to drive up to a town called Suyana to talk to a man about of an extremely endangered bird called the Peruvian plant cutter. And not knowing any of these people, I didn't care and I leaped at the chance. So glad I did. I had a fantastic time. Will, uh, Vilma and Jim is their names, the couple. Um, and they're the, exactly the kind of people I like. They're completely up for an adventure and interested in many things. So that's how this all happened. So we drove up to Suyana, and as we drove up there, uh, we passed through vistas of endless scrub desert, meaning it's a desert, but it does have plant life. Just these scrubby, dry trees that as far as you could see on both sides. And we get to dusty Suyana. And we met Jim Flanagan, uh, an Irish guy, but was raised in the uh, UK. Um, and he has devoted his life to this bird called the Peruvian plant cutter. And the reason is he's an ornithologist. He lives, he is a Peruvian wife and he lives in Suyana, no car. So he takes a motor taxi wherever he needs to go. And uh, the, so the Peruvian plant cutter has only about an estimated thousand left in the world. I, I have the map conveniently behind me. So you see here, this is, uh, this is Peru right here. And right here is the, um, um, this is hard to do it like this. Right along the coast is this dry desert strip that goes right down the length of, of Peru. Uh, yeah, from up in the north at Tumbes, down through Lima, down into Nazca and those places. Um, and it, it goes inland for quite a ways and then we start to get the hills and then the, the low Andes in the, in the north. And then they're not really that high here. They are certainly down in Cusco area, but then over the Andes, you get the Amazon that will go all the way across uh, the rest of the continent. Uh, so there's only that little strip and this uh, Peruvian plant cutter lives only there in the north of Peru. And uh, it's a very unfortunate bird, uh, evolutionary wise, evolution wise, because um, they are folivores, meaning uh, like a carnivore eats meat, omnivore like me eats everything. A folivore eats leaves. So they only eat plants, um, vegetarian sort of, but it leaves, mostly leaves. And um, there's a tree called the Algarrobo, and it's a very, very important tree all through Peru. It is uh, a carob tree, you know, uh, C-A-R-O-B, carob. Remember, uh, I, we, my grandfather loved carob syrup. He would use that instead of um, um, maple syrup, or probably because it was super cheap. But um, uh, carob powder, things like that. They make a, this tree has yellow pods. I've seen them a lot out in a town called Monte Castillo. And um, 
they, you can see mounds of them because they used them to feed their livestock. And you can make a drink out of it. I can't remember the name of the drink. If I find it, I'll put it down in the comments or maybe some Peruvian will put it down there. Um, so it's a very useful tree. Unfortunately, it's useful for other things too. Um, there are two really bad things, three really bad things it's useful for, but um, two really bad ones. One is um, uh, up in uh, an area called Talara, which is the really big last stronghold of the plant cutter bird. Uh, a lot of people will, um, or some people will uh, steal crude oil from the pipeline. There's a lot of oil exploration up there. And they'll make out in the out in the desert, they'll they'll cut down the algorobo and, and uh, make fires to I don't know what they do. They somehow it's a crude refinery type of thing and they make kerosene and then sell it. The other is uh, fishermen off the coast will catch they keep calling them giant squid. I'm not sure they're the real giant squid, which very few people, when very rarely seen alive, but they do wash up on shore, but they must just be oversized squid, let's call them that. And they don't use them. So uh, people will buy them and then out again, um, cutting down those trees, build huge fires with and these huge vats of these um, oversized squid and boil them down and create, a, a, I don't know if it's a powder or what they do with it, but it's used to feed shrimp on shrimp farms. And then last, and I think this is a big, big, big problem, is uh, I heard that every day trucks of uh, algarobo logs or trees um, are shipped down to Lima. And the reason is, um, like mesquite in Texas, used for mesquite um, grilling. The algarobo is used to grill uh, chicken, pollo, pollo a la brasa. And they say it gives a, a really nice flavor. So um, unfortunately, that flavor is destroying those um, algarobo forests. That's the human impact. Now let me tell you about something even bigger, and it is a little insect, a fly and it is coming up from the south and it is destroying the algorobo. We, we passed stands of it that were just dead, not from any human uh, interference, but these bugs. So this is a big, big problem for the bird because that's their main food. That's, that's the food they like the most. They like other plants too, so they're really into uh, plant diversity and that is a big problem. I really, I'm a little perplexed because um, I told you we passed vistas of, of nothing but desert scrub. And I thought, well, why can't they eat those? You know, they look at this land, this wide open desert, but no, it's just not the right kind of plant for them. On top of that, they're extremely territorial. So when they have uh, chicks, those chicks hatch and then they, they fledge, they force them out. Get out, get out, go to college, get out, get a job. Um, and uh, the, nobody really knows where those poor little birds go, but they probably don't, don't make it because the problem is if you've got the parents in one small area and they throw the kids out and there's nothing out there, too bad, very, very tragic. So um, uh, Jeremy is, uh, Flanagan, is the only um, scientist working to um, save these birds and how he's doing it is he has a nursery and um, that nursery about half of it is ornamental plants that he sells to hotels and uh, gardens and um, you know for for his own living and also to supplement the uh, funds for the plant cutter and then the other half is made of uh, native plants algarobo and other plants but the more fast growing things that the, the birds will eat so um, and the goal is to create new habitats. And he's partnered with American, I think it's called American Bird Conservancy, um, ABC. And they have given funds to um, buy tracts of land. And he's trying to convince hotels and uh, resorts to set aside some of their property. Uh, so this is up in a place called Talara. Um, I really like it. I'm gonna, I, I found, um, a sound of the bird, uh, so I'll play that right now.
And, um, and here's some pictures of Jeremy and his um, operation, his, uh, his um, plant nursery. It was really interesting. It's only about 10 feet wide, but it's about a kilometer long. So it was just one patch of plants after another. Coronavirus has put a dent in this because nobody can work and nobody can get around. So things have been put on hold like they have all over the world. Um, and in addition, he also uh, has programs for school children to help plant, help raise plants and um, raise awareness of this bird's plight. Um, you know, it all comes down to plants. It really does. My friends in Africa, you know, they start off as researching elephants and then the next thing you know, they're, they're completely consumed with reforestation and plants. And that's the key, it's the answer to everything. It really is. And um, so, uh, the last thing I'll do is, um, the last thing I'll do is I just wanted to put this out there. Uh, I am certainly not gonna ask anybody for money, my God. I've, you know, how many times have I done that since I've been here? But yeah, if you have any ideas on this, um, because it would be a shame to lose this bird. It would be a real shame because it's endemic to Peru. It's a Peruvian treasure. It's, it's, uh, there's nowhere else on earth. Just this one, this, this little strip, this is it. This is it. And uh, when that's gone, when they're gone, there's no more. Uh, that's it. So um, I'd like to get involved in this because I have to get involved in all kinds of you know what I was going to say. I always got to get involved in things, but um, so this is a new um, a new venture for me is to to, to get involved in the Peruvian plant cutter. <laughs> so join me, will you? Will you become part of the Peruvian plant cutter community? I'm gonna. Um, I'll also post down below a, a link to um, SOS Peruvian plant cutter. It's the the organization run by Jeremy to. Um, it would give you a big, a lot of much more explanations than I can of everything that's going on and about the bird and, and all of that. So um, there you go. Uh, I, I hope you have a fine day and, um, and enjoy um, pictures and, and uh, information about the beloved, now beloved. I never knew this bird existed three weeks ago, <laughs> but now I'm obsessed. My beloved Peruvian plant cutter.